have I would have some sort of long form like you're doing. Yep. Right. Whether you're talking about stuff uh, related to sales and is also going to incorporate something happening in the marketplace around sales. So who are the biggest names in sales right now? We'd probably say Alex Ramosi. Yep. I don't know if we throw Gary V in that in that bucket. Grant Cardone would be Grant, in now. Grant He's Cardone. Got some stuff around. Uh that guy, uh oh gosh, what is the guy that they used to work with Grant Cardone that does stuff? Uh, Brad, Jared, Brad Bradley. Yeah, Bradley, Jared, Bradley. Brent, Glant, yep. So so I would say top of fun so 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 we're doing a podcast. In that podcast, we're gonna Pull some things that they've said that you either agree or disagree with. Strongly agree, strongly disagree. Yep. What has Alex Hermosi said about, you know, I don't know, sales lately? What has Grant Cardone said? What has Brad Lee said? What are the top kind of names? Infusing what they're saying into the podcast. Yep. So we're having a conversation like this, and we're literally pulling up clips, and we're saying, man, Alex Hermosi said that, you know, he doesn't know if— um, you know, selling before you have this amount of expertise is worth it. And he wanted to go and first build before, right? So, so we kind of incorporated, we play a clip, we react to it. Now we have, uh, now we have other things that we're anchoring around the podcast that just makes it more interesting. Yeah. Other names in that niche that are big, big names. And you're going to have a strong agree or disagree with them. Correct. Okay. Then we're going to take those videos and all of those are going to get clipped into individual clips for YouTube. Yep. So we're taking an hour long podcast. We're clipping that into 10, well, maybe let's just call it eight minute clips. So say six clips. So now yeah. we got six individual videos. All of those videos are going to be around something people care about. Grant Cardone is the worst sales guy ever, right? Yeah. Hot take. Oh, and he's into Scientology and that's a scam. Okay, yeah. boom, that's a hot take, right? Yeah. And you get tie in somehow about, and I'm just using Grant Cardone as, as an example. And then, so now you have six individual videos. Every video is touching on other things. It's in a conversational format. So you're leaning into your expertise. And then those clips can get taken and, and made into shorts. Yep. So now we're taking that and we're taking a, a six minute clip, eight minute clip. We're, we're chopping that into a 60 minute short that makes it punchy. The short is going to point people back to the, the mid form. We call it mid form, yep. six to 10 minute video. Those are going to point people back to the long form. And, that, and that's how we would build yeah. that up. And you, so you love that hot take stuff. Like yeah, my wife, good. my wife sends me stuff every day and she's like, love, do a reaction to this. I'm like, mm -hmm. honey, I got to Google how to do a reaction. I'm like, do I do it on my phone? I got to green yep. screen this yep. thing. But like, if I could figure that out, you're saying, bro, take, take some of the stuff that's either current or people that are famous around that subject yep. almost yep. and give your opinion. And, and even on the faith perspective, yep. I'd be like, yo, like this is way hardcore. The Bible doesn't teach selling like this at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it isn't exactly. about getting people to rip their money out of their pocket. Exactly. It's about giving people something that they've always wanted that they're afraid to go after. Exactly. And so it's, I, I like- So I, th I think there would be a lot of yes and content with Alex. Cause yep. I think that's, I, I, I've talked to Alex about this over DM, but he definitely has a, I would say a biblical worldview in the way he approaches business and sales, even though he's not a Christian anymore. Yep. Is, and, and I've asked him this and he's like, yeah, that's, you're right. Like a lot of what I do is inspired by the Bible, even though I don't believe in God anymore, which is really interesting. I've, I've I would love to have a podcast with him about it. Yeah, um, me too. So I think I think yes. So what Alex Hermos you do yes and content, and then with like a Brad Lee, he makes it so easy because Brad Lee does exactly what I'm talking about. He does reactions. Yep, and he has hot takes about random stuff. If you're a dude and you're not making less than six hundred, uh, less than two hundred thousand a year, your life hasn't even started yet. Yeah, like. Like that's a, that's a hot take, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, Ryan Panita said the same thing. I think Bradley said 20 grand a month. If you're not making 20 grand a month, like, okay, so let's, let's flesh that out. Is that true? Or is that only true in LA and, and coastal cities? Flesh that out. Is it realistic? How does that work in a, in a grand scheme of averages? And would you do it in a studio like this and just edit the yeah. video over after yep. rather than like trying to I do it I wouldn't edit the video. I would I would pay someone to do yeah, it for yeah, me for that sure. lives in that world. But yeah. you just watch it on YouTube like right here and yep. you'd be like, you'd, you'd watch it, you get it, and then you just model someone else's video that was a clip yeah let's do it let's let's walk through it right now since we're here nah, let's go here i'm gonna it's that time of year again. let's get it <laughs> okay so uh so this clip right here bradley says this is how you get a free car okay i go buy a range rover for one hundred and thirty thousand. i drive it for three or four years it becomes worth sixty thousand. that is a depreciating item if i would have taken that hundred and thirty thousand dollars invested it wisely at 10% interest, I would make $13,000 a year on that money, but the money would still be there and compound. But the $13,000 would afford the Range Rover. So instead of paying $130,000 for a Range Rover saying, hey, it's paid for free and clear, I could invest the $130,000, take the money that I'm making from the investment and get a Range Rover for free. Or better yet, pass on the Range Rover. Keep driving the car let the 13 now, now he's on so, so it's, you see how he's flowing between like finance everything but then kind of like alex hermosi dave ramsey vibes 
like yeah. keep driving a poopy car. You know, yeah. it's, it's interesting. Thousand dollars stack up. And in 10 years, you got three hundred thousand dollars doing the same. I go buy a Range Rover. Okay, so here's the issue with this, right? The issue with this is that every time you buy the Range Rover and you get the car note for the Range Rover, your overhead goes up. Yep. So I don't want a bunch of overhead, right? Can I afford the Range Rover right now? Sure, I could afford a thousand dollar car note. It's in the market. But do I want to have a thousand dollar car note? Then I'm gonna want another thousand dollar. And so he's missing out on the reality of lifestyle creep. Every time you go buy the Range Rover, you're increasing your lifestyle, and that could be so subtle. So now I, I don't need a, a a nice backpack. I want a I want a Louis Vuitton backpack. Yeah. I, I don't I don't I, I can't just eat at a at a at a decent steakhouse. I want to eat at the best steakhouse. I can't pay $200 for dinner. I got to pay $1,000 for dinner, right? And that lifestyle creep, I think, is something he's missing out on. Now, to his point, he would just say, just go make more money, which is like, well, what about when you don't make more money? What about when there's a disruption in your business, right? Yep. So my, my philosophy with that would be, uh, I would do the latter. I would get the cheap car, drive that into the ground, have so much money saved up, and so so many of my major expenses paid down so that I could take more risk, right? And and yep. that would be more of like the Dave, the Dave Ramsey Alex Hermosi paradigm, right? Now, I think it's cool, and maybe I will someday have a Range Rover, but I, th I think when it makes sense to do what he's describing is the 6,000 car rule. Have you seen this, the 6,000 car? No. So if you get a car that's 6,000 pounds or more, it could be oh, a yeah, business yeah. expense. Right off, yeah, yeah. Up to 80%. Yep. So if I'm at the end of the year, if I have 100 grand and I don't want to pay taxes on it, yep. maybe it makes sense to go buy that Tesla yep. and, and or get a car note for the Tesla maybe, which I'm usually not with car notes, but and then 80,000 of that counts as a flatline depreciation considering you actually use it for business, yeah. right? But this idea of like increase overhead, increase overhead, increase overhead, increase overhead, it just sounds horrifying when I've seen people lose everything, you know? Yep. And I've seen there be serious disruptions. Yeah, you and, know? Yeah, 100%. And the I've seen people lose it all multiple times. They're 60 years old. They're like, I built just nine figures and then I lost it all twice yep. and i'm like what have you just built to like eight figures and like didn't go so overboard on everything right, right. so that when something happened you can consolidate and live to fight another day because right. what's the net positive if you just it's like the guy who's like strict diet loses 10 pounds yep. and then eats like junk and gates it back yep. like why didn't you just kind of like meet in the middle and lose yeah. three pounds rather than yeah. losing one at the end of the yeah. two weeks because you binge yeah yeah fam and feast my philosophy would be and i haven't done this yet but i would like to is like what if my house was paid for right if my house is paid for then that means my only real overhead is food electricity you yeah, know yeah and, and, and if everything were to come down i know that my my biggest living expense would be my biggest expense my, which is my living my housing would be covered yeah. right now maybe he would say that's not an abundance mindset grant cardone said he would call you not an entrepreneur isn't that crazy